Okay, Itamex Kanatani, good morning. It is a sultry two degrees above zero <laughs> in Sikokotok, Lethbridge, Alberta. And we are in what? Mamik sees to go fish day, Friday, September 14th, 2018, in the lunar cycle Awakatsiki, some the deer moon. And I have an appointment this morning. I'm going to be meeting with a group of homeschoolers from here in Lethbridge for a walk and talk in Cottonwood Park. And I think, given the cool temperatures, I think I can safely take them across an otherwise snaky area over to a fossil bed that I know of there. Kids like fossils, right? Especially if they're like crocodile and sea turtle fossils. But they will. <laughs> and we'll look at some plants along the way and who knows what. Um, but yeah, that's what I think is, is on the agenda for them this morning. Before that, though, I do have skunks to deal with. And so I've got my first skunk call on the north side of town. It's not even 8 o'clock yet, so there could be others. But I got up early and took care of my you know, chores, my morning chores at home. Uh, so that I could be available to hurry and rush and get skunks done before my meeting with the homeschoolers. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I figured you had a skunk. <laughs> you might even have more than one. I guess I brought another trap just to set it up, just to make sure we clean it out, you know? Yeah. It's a good size one. Smells like he left a little bit of a perfume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they tend to do that. Yeah, I opened up the shutters today and I couldn't see that uh, silver flap sticking out and there must be something in there. <laughs> <laughs> yup. I wonder about what uh, that little trap was too small for. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mikitsimia Ekaisti Kako Okskans. And off he goes. Yeah, one of my wife's cousins has suggested several times in response to these videos that I try speaking Blackfoot to the animals sometimes. You know, the idea being that it'll be more comforting to them because they have kind of a genetic memory. Thousands of years of exposure to Blackfoot language here. So, definitely worth a shot. And uh, <laughs> helps me practice speaking in any case. This area? Down where they are. Even in here you can start finding them, but there's a bunch kind of on the on the bed down there. Uh, I don't think so. Let's see. Looks like a bone of some kind. Whoa. He found that. I didn't find it. He did. Um, I don't think that's one either. Mm. No. Is this where it's supposed is this one? to be? Yep. This is where they'll be. You one? just got to train your eyes to them. Wait, what did they? Is that one? Okay. I don't think so. Yep, that's a piece. I got a piece. Ryan. What's up? Ryan. That? 
Yes, yes, that's some. Um, that could be a piece of bone. Brian, would it be a piece of bone? <coughs> I found some. Yeah, yeah, that's a piece of bone. See. That's some little tinies, eh? Might be, might be. Uh, Do you remember when we went to Dinosaur could be. Provincial Park? No. Look for stuff. You see this? How it has these marks on there? Yeah. Oh, that that's something. That's probably part of a part of a. That's part of something. This stuff that has these pox on it. This is alligator skull material. Well, that's probably what I found then. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Got a black widow spider. Where is it? No. Right? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, finger. Hey, bite. So it's it's tap on the mom, area. Mom, mom. <laughs> that's it, hey? You see it? Yeah. I discovered it. Did you just hold it? Oh, yeah. Go on. Whoa, mom, its legs are like above its head. I just want to see. Where is it? Here. There's a bite right there. So was there a rock? O there was a rock. Excuse me. Yeah, there was this rock right here. I just pulled it aside to look for fossils in there, and he was just sitting there. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, we yeah. should uh, replace that rock. Yeah, and He's carefully, 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 they exactly bite, the really. way it was. They bite. I know. I've seen. I've come upon. I've had to fling one off of a stick before. So the students have gone on with the rest of their day. I only had maybe about an hour and a half with them. And I told them about some things about the history of this area. You know, how this was a important, this confluence of the river here was a very important meeting grounds for the different bands of, the, of what we now call the Blackfoot Confederacy. Um, and that this, this area here was the, the place where Binakoyim, the, the real famous blood tribe chief from the Mamioyiks, the fish eaters clan. This is where he was laid to rest. Might even been out here by this old cottonwood on the flats that, that, we, that uh, I like to call grandfather tree. <laughs> um, but yeah, I talked to him a little bit about the history of this place. You know, its name shift from Agenisco many berry place to Agate Nisco, the, you know, many deaths place. Um, brought them around, we ate some choke cherries, talked about the, you know, how to prepare, how to harvest and prepare choke cherries and preserve them. Um, we went and looked at the fossil beds, we found pieces of alligator, pieces of sea turtle, um, and we found a, a snail bed and talked about the legalities of of fossil hunting in Alberta and that kind of thing. And we talked about, the, of course, the, the geologic period and what was going on here with the inland sea. Um, the one thing that I didn't get to show them that I wanted to while they were here was Utstutsiman, which was the, the ball cactus or pin, pin cushion cactus berries. Um, excuse me. <laughs> the pin cushion cactus berries. And um, we looked for them, but we just we found some pincushion cacti, but not with any berries on them. And then as soon as they left, of course, I started finding them. So this is what they this is what they look like, and this is their season for harvesting. Uh, this berry right here is what you go in for, and a lot of times they'll have two berries, uh, but it should if it's ripe, it should just come right out like nothing. And um, the taste, it's kind of like a grape, like it pops like a grape, but it's a little bit, I mean, it's seedy, but the seeds are small and chewable, you know, not like grape seeds where if you run into grape seeds, you like spit them out. This is more like, um, like the kind of consistency of a fig, the way that the seeds are in these plants. It's a really good berry, but they're few and far between. <laughs> um, but yeah, Stutzimon is what they're called in Blackfoot, and this is the time of year for picking them, and they're just absolutely delicious. You can dry them, 
just whole as they are they kind of turn into a sweet uh, raisin and you can eat them of course straight off the cacti yeah funny thing happened while I was making my way up to the parking lot here I was walking up the trail and I had this kind of memory flashback from just when I met the students here in the parking lot you know a couple of hours ago I remembered standing here with them you know kind of getting them all gathered to start walking and I looked down and I noticed there was a piece of shed rattlesnake skin here okay and <laughs> You know, that would have been a cool thing for the students to see, but my mind worked so automatically that I saw it and I led them away from it because my, um, my usual association with rattlesnake skins is that it's close to a rookery or a den site and I don't want people to notice them. So if I come across a rattlesnake skin a lot of times and I'm alone, I might just pick it up so that nobody comes across and notices that same thing and then starts looking and notices there's a den or a rookery there. Um, so it's it's usually an evidence of something like that. I mean, not not usually, but in a lot, of, a lot of cases, you'll see that around the dens and the rookeries. So when I come across it and I've got a group of people and, <laughs> and I don't necessarily want to point out that there's a den or a rookery right around, um, like I did, I just automatically led them through and I, I completely repressed the memory <laughs> until I was walking back up here. I was like, oh yeah, there's a snake skin up there. And uh, I just, I'm just uh, floored that <laughs> like how, um, how programmed I am, you know, to, to respond that it just was all so, you know, almost at the level of being unconscious. It's weird. <laughs> 